How you doing, YouTube? How you doing? <laughs> Wade with Dr. Octaveness on YouTube. I'm Matt with Massive Beer Reviews. We're back with a... Uh, I'm not going to tell you we're back with another review. We're back with an experiment because we're just going to go a little buck wild and kind of mix things up and go a little nutty with uh, all this we have going on. Um, we, um, we had a couple beers tonight. We did a couple reviews. Um, we did a brewery review, brewery, brewery Sucra review. Uh, we did a Castle Donker. We did a couple of beers, and two of the beers that we had was Lagunitas Nighttime and uh, Winberg Brothers uh, Barrel Age Bourbon. Um, the Lagunitas Nighttime, I'm a big fan of. I really enjoy it, but we did have some leftover of that. This one didn't strike us as that good, but. So we had more left over of that. <laughs> so we have the, that one and this one, this one and this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a semi-review of a Sam Adams Triple Bach. Sam Adams Triple Bach is um, a Sam Adams Triple Bach. It's horse steroids for beer. Yes, what it, it, what it, what it basically <laughs> is, is Sam Adams, it's exactly what it is, is, uh, is their first foray into big beers. It's a precursor to Utopias. It's what they did when they tried to make something new and unusual and big. And um, So what they put in a Utopias black. Yes, it is. Um, and it's just, it's a lover or hate a beer for a couple reasons. Uh, one reason why is because it tastes really different. Two is because it spoils really easy because the, the packaging is really off. So there's a lot of factors that make it either good or bad. So we don't know if it's going to be good or bad or indifferent. But what we know right now is we're going to taste it and we're going to kind of mix it and see what happens with a bunch of other beers and just try to have a fun experiment with it. So, um, which is what we usually do with the Triple Bock. Like if we have a, I know if I have a beer that I like, but I wish it was a little bit different. I'll splash a little triple bock in it. It might get a little bit better. And it's it's like an ex age accelerator. You'll I, see. I know you've, uh, was it, aged, uh, marinated steaks in them? Oh, I've marinated steaks in it. Yeah. I've, I've mixed it with beers in barrels that I've tried to like make better that were bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just because so, you buy a case of beer, you add a little bit of this to it. It makes it better. Yeah, we found a case of it. Uh, well, you found a case of it, or we found a case of whatever it is. Several cases at one um, place. Yeah, at one place uh, about, only a year or so ago, and you're talking about a 1997 beer. So you're talking about a beer that's 17 years old, and we found a case of it in a distributor. And they still so, have another case. So, yeah. So uh, <laughs> while we're talking, I'm going to start peeling this open. This, from history, this might take a little bit for me to get beer out of this thing. Um, if you're familiar, it's kind you of uh, hard to get beer out of it because the way Sad Sam Adams did their triple box, it's a it, it might be the most beautiful glass that beer has ever come in. It's this beautiful cobalt blue. You'll see it when we're over. I'll rinse it out and I'll show it to you because it's going to have this huge schmegma across the side. I, uh, there's empty it's right up there, there if, you, if, you, if you can't see it. But um, it's beautiful glass, but they have cork tops. And the cork tops were f like this flimsy plastic sealed, which didn't retain any kind of moisture. And the corks, I'm almost, if it pulls out, I'm going to be surprised. And chances are change I'm going to pull this off and the cork isn't going to come with it. So be let's see what they happens. They thought it was going to be wine, but they didn't sell it to you in a case like wine where it should be laid down on its side to keep the cork moist. So yeah. therefore, so the cork breaks off. It just comes like out that. just like that. It breaks off completely. Because so now the cork's left in there. Unfortunately, what no I have to do now is use a wine opener, which no is going to break that. it apart even more. <laughs> and put it in our beer even more. Yeah, so I, I have a filtering system that I have prepared for this because it's just going to make it even worse. So now i got to dig this wine opener into this beer. And it'll which, happen every time. And you're, you're screwing the wrong way. Oh, I just pushed it completely in, which actually is a good thing. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to go <laughs> I completely in. It So I'm going to go off camera right now and go get the filtering system and wait till... I don't yeah, need a filter. Grab it. Usually, it, this they made this beer for three different times. I think I believe it was in '94, '97, and '98. It's just hard to tell which year you have because one of them actually has it printed on the back. But I do believe it was '94, '97, and '98. This is a '97 version. So, I that's about all the info I know. 
I did a little bit of research. You were talking about discerning the years. Yeah, they only did it three times. The one, yeah, it was, uh, what, 94, 95, 97? Oh, uh, was it 94, 95? I yeah. know it was 94 or 97. I didn't know about the other year. I think 94, 95 was, um, there were, 94 was badged and, and it had a tag. Yeah, it had and a And then 95 the had a badge but no tag. And this has nothing, so I think I'm 99 percent sure this is a, a 97. A lot of people complain. They say it's oh, it's real soy saucy tasting, but that's because they just don't understand the flavors and the complaint. It's that's not a beer that you want to drink just one of those to your head. You want to share this beer with at least three to four people. This is way at too much for one four. person. Yeah. <laughs> it's see and, how thick it is. There's no head. There's nothing. There will never be a head on this beer. Even if no. you were the queen of diamonds in <laughs> Alice in Wonderland, there's no off with the head because it's already been gone. And I'll tell you what, this is probably my most successful <laughs> pour in the history of this beer. Just like, look at the dirtiness around the top of that. It used to be silver at one point. Now it's just murky, caramel, soy sauce, chocolate, yuck. Listen, this beer... This bottle is blue. Oh, yes. It still looks black. That's what I'm talking about. But that chocolate sewer smell is so good. Oh. It smells like a sewer. But it's actually, in a good way. You talk about it. Actually, if you want to pour some <laughs> in some glasses, do that. I'm going to rinse this out so I can give people an idea of what this is going to look like. <laughs> this is what this bottle looks like. If you can look at it right now, it's pretty much predominantly back. I'll be back in a second and show you what it looks like. It really smells like a pond where a lot of fish have died, maybe some turtles. You know, one of those backwood ponds you would like to go and get yourself a small mouth. Now, regardless of the smell, the taste is remarkable in small sips. The body and the thickness. You can see as I swirl, it leaves a coating on the glass that drips down very slow. Now imagine that, how it's gonna drip down through your throat into your stomach and how it's gonna coat it. Almost like a scotch or a brandy would do to your glass. Which isn't a bad thing. Because that means that somebody actually put some care into this and put a lot of alcohol in there. And you know, if you drink beer, you want that alcohol. If not, you might as well don't, don't even watch us. Don't watch Matt. Go get yourself a 12-pack of Coors Light. Go down by the creek, or crick, depending on where you live, how you say it. And have a good old time to yourself. But, obviously you're watching this because you want to know something about beer. And this is one of those beers. You can find them relatively, you know, reasonable. Some places will sell them to you for $20 a bottle. Some places, maybe $40. I, I personally, I don't think I'd pay more than $20 for a bottle of this. Luckily for, for us, we got a case that we split between each other for $139. Which, right now I can't do that math, and I don't have my cell phone to do that calculator for you. <laughs> and then here's the bottle. I'll get a little douched with uh, water, but um, I'm back on the camera, by the way. And that is your bottle now. Like, if you, I mean, that's like beautiful <laughs> cobalt blue. That thing was dark, and that was after it was poured. Like, there's so much sediment in that thing. It is absolutely ridiculous. So it just goes to show you um, what was inside of that beer before we actually poured it. So this so, is yeah. how you make beer good. Yeah, where, uh, that's yours. Where's the uh, where under the, uh, under the filter? Oh, nice. I didn't want to put the filter around one of your other beers, as to destroy, you know, what was over in there. See, I'm already hiccuping. Yeah. That means we're that drinking. Be. Well, hold on. Don't trick it yet. I'm gonna, oh, no, I'm still. did the whole level. I did the whole the spin, show uh, how it coats. So let's talk about the head on this beer. How? What do you think about the head? It doesn't exist because it doesn't exist. <laughs> There's never going to be a head on this beer ever in the history of mankind because no. there would uh, you don't have heads on things like this. No. Um, body wise, it. Um, what is it? Um, this, this body. Port, wait, port, wait. Port brewing makes what's called older viscosity. Their viscosity is freaking water compared to this viscosity. This, this is Grace Jones. This is how dark this is. Yes. This, this is, is a Grace beautiful Jones. kill. Yeah. <laughs> this is Sanjay. Yes. Yeah. If you know what Sanjay is, then <laughs> thumbs up to you. Because that's what this is. Because if you roll this around your glass, it just gives you like 
the murkiest of murkiest film ever in the history of mankind. They, they put this on glasses to make those nighttime yellow driving glasses. This is what they coat those yeah. lenses with. This is, this is blue blockers. <laughs> um, as far as smell, smell, not taste yet. It smells smell. no. You have to. You have it, to it, wait. It smells like it smells like a sewer. It smells like a delicious sewer. Yeah, though. well, it smells like a sewer with. This is the real raisin. This is like you took a box yes. of raisins, you left it out, and it just smells like this after fifteen years of what raisins without the mold would smell like. Over ripe prunes. I've, I've, I've actually seen a couple of people review this beer online, and they go, "Oh, it's turned. Oh, it's turned. I can't drink this. This beer is not turned. It's not. No. It's not. I can smell it right off the bat. It's not turned. What it is, it, it's gotten to the point where it's gotten so savory, so umami, to the point where it's like it's a next level thing. That not to say that I, I just know better than people, but it's, it's just, turned so much they put it in this utopias. Yeah. For their 10th anniversary special edition Utopias. Yeah. So it, it's turned so much because you guys know so much. But, but, okay. Cheers, brother. You just don't know what turn-in means. Mm. The chocolate-covered raisins. That you, this is going to the movies on your first date with a girl, and she wants goobers, and you want raisinettes. And this is what you got. I am sitting inside a campfire. Like, I'm actually sitting inside a campfire while drinking fluid from the smoke of the campfire while raisins are added. Like, it's like, it sounds retarded, but it's so raisiny, so smoky, so good, it's not even funny. Like, it's not even funny. We it's will even... sell you beers of this. As I said, it's not worth more than twenty bucks to me, but I will sell to you Actually, for forty dollars. I'm giving a bottle this way. Oh, you're giving? He's see, he's he's giving a bottle away. I am giving it. If you follow us on Instagram, I'm doing a, a bottle giveaway of one of these. Good luck finding some on the internet. I'm giving one away. If you want to, <laughs> like, if you want to buy all this, follow us on Instagram. We'll go to the, we'll go over that in the end of the uh, YouTube video. But anyway. I don't give any of this away. The only thing I give away is comas. Comas in, in, in advice. And yeah. my advice, get a coma. That's right. <laughs> my advice is get yourself one of these. Even if you're going to have mm. a little party, one of these bottles, you see how much we only took a little bit out? You see, this is all going to get mixed into other beers to make these other beers that I really personally didn't think had enough body and taste. But this is going to give it that oomph that it needed. It's like giving breast implants to a beer. Yes, and, and, and it's in, like, in a good way, not those bad ones that one's left and one's yeah. all the way right. It's not stripper tits. <laughs> it's uh, it's high end Beverly Hills. Do the booyakasha. Do do booyakasha. That, that's, that's what right. I'm talking about. It's, it's gonna give it's gonna give Beverly Hills boobies to the mommies. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna get those. I I milked my baby for five years on these boobies. I'm that's gonna give you those Barbie. The real Barbie boobies, not that Barbie woman walking around. I'm talking that plastic one that you used to talk with your sister about. You're like, can I borrow that for the night? You know what I'm talking about. Oh my god! Like it's it, like I like every time I drink this, I, I I actually go out of my way to think I might not like it, but every time I have it, it's better every time. No, because it's soy sauce and it's turned. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. Oh, you don't this, want any. This, this is a bad it. beer. If you find it, if buy it and think, just give it to me. And obviously, there's going to be turned ones every now and then. There's going to be infected ones. There's going to be bad ones. But a lot of people review this beer and think it's bad, and it's not even close to bad. What it is is so good they don't even know what they're drinking. Mm. And wait, let, let, let me re say this. Well, not let me re say this. Let me just say this. I tried this beer when it first came out. Yes, both and, it of us. Was, and it was because I used to go to a bar, and the two of us would go there, and we'd be like, oh, give us the Thomas Hardy that you have. And this came in, and just, you know, one case, our beer place got it, and we drank the shit out of it. And then we never got it again until a couple years ago. A couple years? Uh, yeah, well, a couple years ago. That's what I mean. We're talking like 10, maybe 10 15 years. 15 years? It was on the list of, well, 17, oh, we should so drink that again. 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. So now... Then we drank it again, and we're like, uh, it actually wasn't as good then as it was th 
when we first drank it, and it wasn't as good as it is now because it aged even more, and more of the little subtleties came out now. It's so good. I mean, this is ridiculous good. I know. Oh See, look how quick he drank his. I'm trying to savor it. Mm. I'm, I'm savoring it because I know there's not many of these left. And after you see well, this, yes, we have you're going to drink them. We have a couple. I have a couple, but I'm not selling them, not unless you want to pay me 40 bucks. Which, this is not a sale. I'm not trying to sell it to you. I don't want you to buy it. I don't want you to buy it anywhere. If you see it, send me a note of where the place is at, and I'll buy it from them so you don't even have to spend your money. I'll spend my money on it, thank you. It's like the late night, uh, like a sword channel. Yeah. Like, I don't even want you to buy this stuff. Don't but buy I mean, this knife. You're yeah. gonna cut yourself. But this is you should a, give it to me, a real professional that knows how to cut. This is such a beautiful bottle. I mean, look at that that cold bottle. This is my favorite bottle of all time of any beer that I've ever drank. With the cork top that doesn't work. I mean, and, if it worked, and when it when it did work, it was beautiful. And that's no label. That's like that's actual. Yeah, paint. it's screen printed it's on screen there. Screen printed gold. Everything's screen printed on there, and all it says is oh, you know the Sam, Ad Sam Adams Shrivelbach. On the front, nothing else. On the back, it says St. Adam's Triple Bock, ale brewed with maple syrup, no shit, um, 8.45 fluid ounces, brewed and bottled in Boston Beer Company under special arrangement by Sarah's California. Yeah. Other than that, it's government warning stuff. There's nothing on this bottle. Best, best bottle in the history of bottles. Try to find out how much alcohol is in there. You better do your own home yeah. gravity test. Roll and your if dice. If you don't got one of those big tubes, then you need a bucket to figure out how the gravity is going to be. So good chance in that, my friend. Does anybody need an oil change in their car? Because I, I can manage that <laughs> yeah. right now. This is the oil in my Honda I drove around eight years without changing. This is what that is. But it's so good. That's the funniest part. It's just so good. <clears throat> it's so good. It's good enough. It's good enough you shouldn't know. Drink your shit. Let's, mm. get in, let's get in the mixing. I'm gonna mix right here. You wanna mix? I'll okay, mix. first, no, no, no. Uh, Put it down. First off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the Widmer Brothers. We're gonna try it before we mix it. I we're gonna give it a quick opinion about it. Quick one. Okay. I can't because that. that we were just drinking my it. Whole yes. Beautiful. We're gonna, but we're gonna give it. Okay. Let's do it. Mm. Mouthfeel still nice. It's, it's creamy. It's not thick like the um, Sam Adams Triple Bock. This is the Whitmer Brothers um, Bourbon 13. We're going to mix that with that. It's not bad. I mean, it actually tastes better now than it did before because I think that mixture is in our mouth already. But, oh, yeah. But it's, it's, it's creamy. It's not bad. There's not much going on. It's a decent beer. Have, have no thoughts. This right here coats your tongue. This, like it coated the glass, it coats your tongue. So whatever you put in your mouth after this will be affected. Hands down. Let's do it official style. Oh, what are you going to bring in small little glasses? I'm going to bring an old school stirrer. Oh, a little <laughs> stirrer. I don't, I don't stir my beer. I stir it in my belly. I go out and really go Mad Men style with your old glass stirrer. Let's, let's get this mix on. Let's Splash. See. You might have put a little more in it. Mm -hmm. We'll see. See, look at that. Instantly it's changing the color. You can watch as I pour I'm only going to do a little bit. Not even a half a shot, I would say, I put into my... But I, I know it's going to change little... the flavor immensely. Yeah, I put probably a little bit too much in mine, but again, a little bit too much in yeah, front of me. a little darker than mine. Yeah, definitely a little darker than mine. Yeah, definitely a little bit darker. Because you, you gave it a good splash. I gave it a little light splash. We'll see. This is a beer that I add to my barrels when I'm aging other beers. I add that to give it that goodness of the raisin that I love. Because I, I love that raisin and dark, dry fruits. Nothing beats that. Cheers. Cheers. Let us see. Oh, I smell it. It's like magic juice. It just makes everything better. It flattened it out to the point where like a lot of the notes that it had originally... Or subdued, but it made it way more it, creamier. It took that dryness. Oh, uh, well, wet zero the, dryness now. <laughs> the dryness now actually has a body that you can contemplate in your mouth of what flavors are rolling over your palate. Oh, so good. 
Like, and that's you the get thing. that maple syrup more now. Yeah. It's less raisins, but more mapley because it added actually to this pretty non-existent flavor beer that was like really quick finish. I'm trying to. It tastes like something I'm trying to associate it to. Good. Right now, <laughs> it tastes like a watered down old stock, an old school war, old stock. That's what it tastes like to me. Like North Coast Old Stock. North oh, North Coast Old Stock is one of both of our favorite beers. Um, North Coast Old Stock, like, and the reason why we like it is because Old Stock, if you have a, our favorite beer is Thomas Hardy. If you drink a brand new Hardy and a brand new Old Stock, they don't really taste like each other, but when you wait about five years, they start to, like, merge together. Once you get to about ten years, they're spot freaking on. And what this does is, Tastes like something like a four-year-old old stock, somewhere right around there, which is a really, really good thing for me. That's what it tastes like. Oh, it's way better. Uh, it's way better now that I added this. <laughs> that's what I added. Mm-hmm. So, these guys, they make a good beer, which you know I didn't age this because this is a 2013 beer, which could be great in five years. I don't know on its own, but I don't see much coming out of what was going in. No, no, that beer was, <laughs> that, that beer, if you aged that beer, it was going to get less, it was going to get better, but not that much, more, much better. With this involved, infinitely better. It, spray, it spiced that beer up good. Yeah. It actually gave it more body, more flavor, more, more juice. Yeah. Give it a kick in the ass. It's like lemonade and added sugar. Yes. This is lemon water. Now I added the sugar. Now it's lemonade. <laughs> Here's the thing. We reviewed this beer, the Widmer Brothers. Didn't blow us away. We kind of didn't want to keep drinking it, but now I want to keep drinking it. That's all I know. You see, we put it away. And now we brought it back out. It's, what's that, a revival? Like yeah. we didn't... It's a rebirth. <laughs> Yeah, it's an immaculate res- uh, inception, is what that is. It's, it's a rebirth right after 303, 909, and 808. Yeah. <laughs> Suck it, rebirth. You don't even know what that meant. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> but that's okay. Well, actually, you know what? A couple of people might. And if you do, you're awesome. Then you should be drinking this kind of mixture going on right here. Now, let's move on. Put that off to the side. Let's move on to the lagging. I actually don't want to put it off to the side like I did before because actually I made it good now. Yeah, no. Which they should take a note from us and put us in there. I'm super, super interested to see what this does to the Lagunitas Nighttime. I actually like the Lagunitas Nighttime. I give it a really good score. I'm a big fan of it. But I'm just really curious as to what this beer will do to that. Like that hoppy note, I, I don't know if it's just going to shut it right out. Or if it's going to make something explode, I have no idea what it's going to do to it. And it's really, really exciting what it's going to do. So, yeah. You taste it? Pre-Funkin? Yep, pre-Funkin. This is before we already add the George Clinton. George, yeah, the P-Funkadelic. Before the P-Funkadelic takes his dive. Way hoppy. So, I mean, we've just been drinking some super malty beers. The hop note is super explosive, super piney, super grapefruit. Yeah, it is that pine grapefruit. Yeah. So, I feel like I'm eating breakfast in, in a forest. <laughs> but I still like it. You know what I mean? So, let's see. What now I'll add my, my little bit, which is about a half a shot, I would say. I mean, it's not yeah, tons. put a little less in there than okay. I did last time. See? see? I'll lick the drop. Because that stuff's that good. Interesting. Interesting. There's a little bit of head going on now. That's the only way you're getting ahead on that beer. Add it to something else. Pretty much. Cheers, brother. Cheers. are almost gone. It's so that bizarre. Piney, that piney taste has now been taken it, over by so a maple su- pie. It's so subtle. Like, it's still there, but it's so subtle. I still have that bitter, that little bit of bitterness that hops give you when you have a, a really hoppy beer. Which, this one isn't a super hoppy beer at first, but 
it did have hops, but now the hops have been a little bit closed down. The pininess, it's so is mellowed out instantly. Like from my last sip, where I you saw before I added to this, it's it's a total different ball game now. It's so weird. It's like it's like mad scientist time. Like it's like, it's you like aged this beer five years in a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. It, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> it's like it's so bizarre because. <laughs> You're pouring, like, like he poured, like, l- way less than a shot. I probably poured just a scotch more than him. And it's so different of a beer. It's so different. It's, But it makes sense. It does. You, you know what makes more sense? If you see this stuff, you buy it. Then when you have some bad beers, like, you know, not bad beers, because this is, this is a relatively good beer. I can see many people loving this beer because of the simplicity of it. But you add this to that beer or the Lagunas or whatever it's called, <laughs> and now you have not just a regular beer, you have an exceptional beer. And that's the thing with the Treble Bach, and it's, it's something a lot of people don't do with beers. I'm a beer purist. I love my good beers. I love, like, I've made no qualms. I love Thomas Hardy. I love J.W. Lee's. I love an old, old stock. I love aged beers. I love a Sammy Claus. I love all my pure beers. But one thing, especially with the Sam Adams Treble Bock, is to mix two beers together. Like you would do, like, you know, you go to a sh- crabby bar and they're like, I'll give you a black and tan. It's almost like a, huh. like, a, a, like a generic version of that. To take, to mix two beers, to me, is not a sin. I, I know a lot of people out there might think it's a sin, and I and I can see it being a sin with certain beers. I'm not gonna mix, um, you know, a hearty with a a, 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 a Sammy Claus or even a Sammy Claus. If I mix a hearty with Sammy Claus, that'd be weird to the point where I don't think I'd like. It. I actually might I'd like, try. I want to try it. I want to try it. I might catch. actually try Thanks that. Catch. But uh, I, I don't want to try it, or I want to try it, but I don't know it'd be good. But there's some things that make sense in. And this makes sense. So I think one of the biggest, not biggest, but one of the next steps in beer might be, would be blending. Like, t- like you blend scotch. you blend scotch. And that was the next word out of my mouth. I hate blended scotch. He hates blended I hate scotch. <laughs> We're spy side junkies. Do you know what I mean? We love spy side scotches. But the next step in beer might be blending beers together. Taking this beer, taking this beer. Throwing notes together, throwing flavors together, and bringing out something new. And hopefully we we will try to keep doing that on this channel and tell you guys what might work. Because we've been doing it for a little while. I've, I've been doing it for a yeah. I, no, I know. We're, we've been totally doing it for two years at least. And I haven't seen anybody do it other than a black and tan, which is yeah, a bass and a Guinness. Or you use like something like a harp in a Guinness or some kind of harp in a left hand stout or something. Yeah. You know. Your age generic stuff. What I'm talking about is super heavy, dense, thick stuff and stuff that hasn't matured. Yeah. Don't and that's pretty much what we've been doing. You could make sucky stuff. Well to me, not not sucky, but you know lower echelon beer into something that you would actually enjoy drinking. Yeah. Which is Fantastic, and and you you said this before. I've touched on it before. It's almost like time warping a beer. <laughs> you're taking a beer that is good, and what you're doing is accelerating it many many years ahead. In in honestly, in, in seconds, in seconds, and it's that's like Doctor Who shit. Yes, it, but way <laughs> better than Doctor because no TARDIS involved. Yeah. But and that's the thing. Like for me, age age in a beer is the white whale. I love old. And any time I can make a beer taste old, I'm a fan. And that's why I'm a fan of stuff like this. Like old beer and old cars. You could keep the old women. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> Next thing out of my mouth. <laughs> old beers, old cars, and new money. <laughs> I don't know. Both of these are actually turned out much better than, I know. than they, they were before. Yes. Which is why we put them in a the fridge and we're like, we're going to see what we'll do later at the end of this because... Yeah, we are. We might be a little bit more tipsy now, but 
my palate is still the same. And I know crappy beer when I taste a crappy beer. And, and these are that not, is not a crappy beer. And that's not a crappy beer now that we put a little triple block in it. Our biggest problem is now what to do with the rest yeah, of this we triple got, block. <laughs> we got all this triple block. I don't know what else. What do you want to mix it with something else? I don't know what we're, you want to do. We have anything else? Yeah. I still got to go home. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to walk 13 feet. And yeah, rough, rough walk. Hey, 13 <laughs> steps sometimes after drinking this stuff. You don't know. Well, here's better the deal. Than driving. I am Matt with Massive Beer Reviews. This is Weed, Dr. Octave One on YouTube. We had an awesome night tonight. We hope you guys enjoyed it too. Um, you might see more beer reviews from us. You might oh, not. Probably. Yeah. We got we got a couple beers that you know we're gonna sit on the side, and then you know once once we get a lot more viewers, and you tell your friends, and their friends tell their friends, then we're gonna break out the stuff that you really want to know about that you haven't seen really in your life. You might have heard about it, but you haven't seen it or tasted it. You haven't, and that's the thing. And that's the truth. I got we got yeah. some stuff. Twenty years OG. <laughs> Twenty years OG. We can bring it. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed the review. Um, we hope you guys watched all our reviews, I'm and we hope you're drinking as good of beers as we are, and we hope you join us later. Cheers! Cheers to you, two fisters. <laughs> Next time, we're going to do some Avery Samuels and some stuff like that. Oh, high-end stuff. Massive beer reviews. Massive beers. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Check us out. Peace.